In Creo Parametric Sheet Metal, you can create edge bends. And to show you this, I'm going to create a brand new sheet metal part. Let's click the new icon. It's also the keyboard shortcut of Control N. My type is set to part. I'll change the subtype to sheet metal. And for the sake of this demonstration, I'm not going to change the file name. Let's click OK. And I have my part started. Let's turn on the display of my datum planes. I'm just going to select the datum plane called front. And from the mini toolbar, let's create an extrude feature. Normally, I create external sketches, but for here, I'm doing an internal sketch. I'm going to go to the palette, and let's go to the polygons tab. To make this a little interesting, I'm going to use a five-sided pentagon and drop it in here. Scale is too small for me to see. Let's change that to a value of 10 and turn off the display of my datum planes to reduce clutter. By default, I get a drag location located at the center of the sketch, but really I want to lock the midpoint of this line into the intersection of my sketch references. So to change the drag location, hover your mouse over the drag handle and then hold down the right mouse button. I'm changing the drag location and it snaps right to the midpoint. That way I get to drag it exactly where I want it to be. Let's hit the check mark to get out of the import section dialog box and I can hold down the right mouse button to get to the check mark to get me out of sketch mode. And here it's extruding the pentagon. Let's change this. Maybe I'm going to use a value of 12. And if I zoom in here, you can see that we automatically get bends on the edges. If I go to the Options tab for the Extrude tool, there is a sheet metal option that automatically adds bends on the sharp edges. You can choose thickness or two times the thickness or just type in a value to make something very big that you can see. But for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to turn this off. And that way we're just going to end up with sharp corners. And this will get us geometry that is not realistic. I can't even unbend this. If I go to the In Graphics toolbar, we have a flat pattern preview. And you can see in the little window, it tells me that the preview is not available. The model has sharp edges that cannot be unbent. Let's turn off the preview. And first off, to make it unbent, I'm going to do an edge rip. From the Rip drop-down menu, you can also do surface rips sketch rips or rip connects but i'm just going to do a simple edge rip and then select this edge over here and click the oh before i click the check mark i just wanted to show you that placement tab allows you to create multiple sets of references and you can control the seam you can do an open seam let me zoom in over here just to show you this is the open seam here with blind you can control the gap along both of the edges or if you choose gap, you just get a single dimension control between them. You can do an overlap, which again, here in this situation is unrealistic. Let's just change this back to open and then hit the check mark. So that way we have our rip in here. And I can go to the flat pattern preview. And indeed, it can be flattened at this point, but it's not realistic because of these sharp edges in here. So let's turn off the preview and take a look at a couple of different ways of getting our edge bends in there. If I go to the drop down from the bend command, here we have edge bend and I can select an edge here in the model. And we can see that right now it is dimensioning to the inside and it's giving me a bend radius of the thickness. Let's take a look on the ribbon. From the drop down list, here's where we can change the value. And there we have two times the thickness. This thickness in parentheses means that it's going to use the value from the parameter sheet metal default bend radius. And I'll show you where that is both in the parameters dialog box and the model properties dialog box. But let's choose something big enough for you to see. Eh, 0.5, even that's a little small. Let's go to one. Yeah, nice big one inch radius dimension to the inside. If you wanted it dimension to the outside instead, you can go to the drop down menu and choose outside. And this third choice here, let me collapse my model tree just to make it easier for you to see. This third choice over here allows you to use the parameter sheet metal default radius side. 
So that is good for the first bend. I'm going to go to the placement tab and show you that you can create multiple sets of edge bends. And I'm going to hold down the control key and select another edge over here. So that is good. Let's select this third edge over there. And just to show you some of the other different functionality in here, I'm going to create a, another set for the final edge. And on this final edge, you will notice that we have these yellow circles, which are drag handles. If you're using an earlier version of Creo Parametric than me, right now I'm in Creo Parametric 6.0. If you're using 4.0, I believe they are white circles. I think 3.0 and earlier, they might be white squares. But be aware that depending on your version, your drag handles look different. And I can grab the drag handle if I don't want this going along the entire edge. Let me change this back to a value of zero. And let's use a different value for the thickness on this one. And I just want to show you that I'm going to hit the check mark and then go to the flat pattern preview to show you what this looks like. I'm going to go back in a second and edit definition. So there you can see in the flat pattern preview where the bends are and the bend axes around there. So right now it is able to preview. Let's turn that off. And I'm going to go to my edge bend feature and edit definition. Let's go back to the placement tab for edge bend two. Let's drag it off of here. And let's say I don't want this going along the entire length. Let's change this to a value of minus two. That is good. Instead of using a dimension to control that offset distance, you could use an actual point in the model. Uh, so for example, if I'm dragging this out over here, if I had a datum point on that edge, I could use that. Let's turn on the datum point visibility. I don't have a point on there. So if you go to the datum dropdown menu on the right hand side of the ribbon, here's where you can create datum features. And I'm going to click the datum point icon and that's going to pause the ribbon of the tool that I'm currently working in. And that way I can create my datum point, say, hey, maybe I want this located 0.8 along the length of the edge there. If I want it dimensioned from the other side, it changes it to a value of 0.2. And right now it's using a length ratio. In other words, it normalizes the length of the edge between zero at one end and one at the other end. And then you enter a fraction between zero and one to control the location of that point. Instead of using the length ratio method, you could use the real option, or you could actually choose a reference. I could use another point for defining this point, or maybe a vertex, whatever. But this is good for creating this datum point. Let's click the OK button to get out of here. And then I will resume the dashboard. And I'm going to drag this out over here, because right now my point is being covered up. If I'm dragging this and hold down the Shift key, it will allow me to snap into geometry like that particular point there. You'll notice I don't have a dimension for the location of that drag handle like I have on the right hand side. So in this way, I'm only doing a partial bend on that edge. And if I go to my flat pattern preview, you're going to say that, hey, the preview is not available because the model has surfaces that cannot be unbent. So there's an issue with having this partial edge bend in the model. Let's close the preview and select my bend feature. And actually, I'm not going to select the bend feature. I am going to create another edge rip. And for the edge rip, let's select this edge over here. And then for the control key, select the other edge on the other side and then hit the check mark. And then now when I go to my preview, it gives me a little error about overlapping geometry in this particular area. Hey, let's close the flat pattern preview and let's see if I can get to the edge, edge, edge rip feature. Right now it is using the open option here. If I zoom in, yeah, it's giving me an error about overlapping geometry. Hey, let's change this to a little bit of a gap. And right now it's using half of the thickness. Ah, let's go with that. I will hit the check mark. And that's good for that. Let us go to the flat pattern preview. And still giving you an error about overlapping geometry in this particular situation. So.
And I realize the problem is that I'm using a very large radius for my edge bend over here. Let's change the size of the edge rip in order to compensate for that. Let's go to the placement tab and for the gap. Right now I'm using a value of 0.5 times the thickness. Let's try a value of the thickness. Now I think that's still going to be too small based on this radius. Let's make it nice and big. Let's try a value of 0.5. Ah, a little too big. Let's try 0.25. That should be good. And hit the check mark. And now let's go to the flat pattern preview. And in this situation, now we can see that, yes, we do have a nice healthy gap in between there. And I could play around with the numbers in order to figure out what exactly that gap should be so that I have minimized the distance between those surfaces if that's what I want. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.